How's it going guys? Welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. A sandwich just appeared in the Haunted Pantry. Deep within the Haunted Pantry you find a small cabinet door that rattles mysteriously as though something were trying to escape. Despite your better judgment, which you figure you're gonna have to learn to ignore if you want to be much of an adventurer, you flip the little latch holding the cupboard shut. <laughs> holding the cupboard shut. With a deafening screech, two slices of bread leap out of the cupboard, sailing over your head as you duck. They are followed by several slices of tomato, a lettuce leaf, some Swiss cheese, and a glob of what appears to be chicken salad, which is contorting itself into the shape of a horrible screaming face. This is probably the polter sandwich that Gorgonzola sent you looking for. I mean, if you had to guess. Oh, so at the, in the last episode, I, I was I got confused and thought that maybe this was a regular haunted sandwich but not actually the polter sandwich uh when i say that sentence out loud i realize how absurd that is of course this is obviously the poultry sandwich pseudo exercise me a sandwich you begin a chant to focus your mental energies riboflavin mel maltodextrin monosodium glutamate sensing your intentions the ghostly sandwich fixings howl and gibber and swarm around you forcing you to duck and dodge frantically as you bring your powers to bear soon however you manage to catch the foodstuffs in your telekinetic grip and wrestle them together into a unified sandwich while which you impale with a ruin inscribed toothpick to bind it in this form now i understand why there's toothpicks in sandwiches now to get back to Gorgonzola before the bread gets soggy. Nobody likes it when that happens. Pickles are one of the best things you can put on a sandwich, but if you have to leave it for more than like 30 minutes or an hour, they can straight up ruin a sandwich. It's a real shame. It doesn't say that anywhere on the screen, that's just my own <laughs> sidebar. The sandwich has had a lot of the fight taken out of it, which is good, because in a just and fair world, sandwiches contain exactly zero fight and exactly zero mayonnaise. Uh, get out of here, man. I'm having a lot of dis disagreements with the the writer of this game recently. He hates tomatoes, he hates he hates mayonnaise. What do you even put on your sandwich, man? Uh, so, uh, the next thing you're going to tell me, you don't even put cheese on your sandwich. Get get out of here. Don't, get, get out of my face. I don't even want to hear from you. I better go talk to Gorgonzola, though. Back to the Spooky Raven Manor. Back to the right side of the tracks. Back to the seaside town. Oh wait, this is where the thing is. I went back one too, too many. Gorgonzola, you hand the captured polter sandwich to Gorgonzola. Well done, he says, as he seals the ghostly sandwich with a ruin etched plastic baggie. <laughs> so the toothpick and the baggie are all ruin etched. You better hope the toothpick doesn't pierce that plastic baggie, baggie though. Maybe he took it out. He puts it in the fridge. You're now an official member of the League of Chef Magi. Welcome to the club. He winks at you with a broad grin, and then after a brief pause adds, you know, like a club sandwich? Right, I got it, you say. Oh, and you should talk to Bree about getting yourself some new skills. Gouda can hook you up with provisions. Everyone here is a cheese base character, so I'm going to go ahead and guess the writer of this is a, is a fan of cheese. In which case, I'm back on board. We can be friends again. Oh, and you want to borrow that guild meat car? Talk to Blaine. He's back there in that box. Blaine? Where the hell's Blaine? Back in a box? Oh, right here. <laughs> it looked like a staircase or something. Now this place is filled up a little bit. It was it was quite dull in here before. Who should I talk to first? Who seems like they could be the most helpful? Bree, let's get some more skills. How about that? Whoa. Oh, pretty expensive to get some of these. 15,000, Jesus. So, so what can I afford then? I don't have 250 meat. I don't really know how I would afford this. Ravioli, ravioli shurikens, that sounds awesome. Utensil twist and tangling noodles and transcendent al dente. Oh, man. Oh, but maybe, uh, yeah, it's more of a level thing, not a meat thing. So... I want the shurikens though, that sounds hilarious. Uh, that takes a big chunk out of my meat. That's that's all I can do with her for now. I honestly already forget what everyone does. Where'd you go, Gorgonzola? Tell me what to do. Be sure you remember to speak to Bree from time to time. As you grow more powerful, she'll have more to teach you. If you wish to explore the mystical possibilities of a relaxing trip to the shore, ask Blaine where he left the keys to the guild meat car. Uh, I've, that's that's kind of for another another time, I suppose. 
Roderick the Staff Crafter? Hello, young chef mage. I'm Roderick the Staff Staff Crafter of the League. You may think of staves as clumsy, brutish weapons. Good for little more than smacking things upside the head like some sort of clumsy brute. But a staff can be so much more than just a big stick. Why, I can make it into a chef's staff, which is basically a big ladle. <laughs> it's kind of what it looks like, at least. A chef mage's most powerful ally next to magic itself. I'll tell you what, you show me a staff and I'll tell you what I can do with it. Unfortunately, you don't have any staves with which Roderick can make anything. Okay, so I have to bring him like a blank staff and then he can make it powerful. Asiago, the past mancer, and Edom, the sorcerer. Edom is uh, something I don't know. It's, I, I, I don't know. I know what Asiago is. It's type of type of cheese, I'm assuming, but I just don't know what it is. Ah, you must be the League's newest member. Welcome, I am Asiago, head past a mancer within the League. I haven't got any tasks for you right now. Check back with me later on. Go back to the Council of Loathing is my current quest. So I'll, I'll go back and do that then. See if they're proud of me. We require your aid. Hey, this is my first proper quest coming down my way, I think. We need a mosquito larva. Don't ask why, because we won't tell you. In any case, the best place to find a mosquito larva is in the spooky forest, which is found in the distant woods. We'll mark it here on the map for you. Hmm. What what do I what do I think of that? Is that is that on the main map here? It is. Do I want to spend more time exploring some of this stuff? You know, there's so many areas. Like I could explore any of these things. There's so many different areas just in the pantry itself. Like let's check out let's check out the haunted kitchen a few times. You approach the open door to the kitchen, but before you can enter, there's an ear-splitting screech and the door slams shut in front of you. Hmm, apparently somebody doesn't want you going in there. What about the library? The library door is locked. The billiards room, it's locked. Okay, okay, so it's not endless. Ooh, the haunted conservatory. You try to open the screen door to the conservatory, but an unseen force pushes it door pushes on the door exactly as hard as you're pulling on it. For every action, there is a spooky and opposite reaction. Oh wait, so that makes me feel a little bit more like I am still being guided. It's not entirely a free do whatever you want situation yet, which is kind of good. It would be a little overwhelming if there was this many different options all at once like that. So I'm I kind of am enjoying that I'm being eased into it a little bit. So the distant woods it is. Ooh, there's a forest village tucked away. Uh, I'm gonna go there first, just to see. The Untinker's Cottage, the Bugbear Bakery, a science tent, the Crackpot Mystic Shed, and the Bounty Hunter Hunter's Shack. <laughs> That's immediately funny to me, I wanna go to that. The Bounty Hunter Hunter. Would you like to be a bounty hunter and earn some filthy lucre? <laughs> These are the things I'm currently paying bounties on. Today's easy bounty, six important bat files from briefcase bats in Guano Junction. Okay, hard, hard one is 13 disintegrating corks from sommeliers in the haunted wine cellar of Spooky Raven Manor. Today's specialty bounty, 13 pickle chips from burgers in the Sloppy Seconds Diner. Okay, so it's cool to know that this is something I can come back to and and work through back to the village. Most of this is stuff that I probably can't do right now, to be honest. Dr. Gordon Stewart, a scientist. Well, I've seen my work on the Eldritch Emanation Radioactive Ion, em Ion Emitter to the Journal of Metaphysical Science. I'm just waiting on notes from the reviewers. I'm still experimenting on this tentacle I saved, though, so maybe that'll be a second paper. I've been considering some research into rocks, dirt, and dust particles. I think that refuse material is an area of the physical sciences that has long been ignored. I wonder if I can get any materials from that monorail dig site. Can I fight the tentacle you saved? No, I'll probably die. Uh, tell me about the refuse material. I must say it's a very exciting branch of the physical sciences. Did you know that there's over 40 bajillion dust particles floating around the atmosphere at any moment? I wonder how accurate that is. Imagine if you could convert even a small fraction of these particles into a more useful item. Limitless energy, boundless resources, so much science. Currently, I've figured out how to turn dust into rock refuse or clumpy dirt and back. 
From there, just a few simple calculations and the sky's the limit. It's a limit because that's where most of the atmosphere, dust, thus the refuse dust, is, you see. That's a lot of commas. Well, that's more than I ever wanted to know about dust, honestly. Uh, great. I'm really enjoying this kingdom. I'm so glad I came. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I'm glad for you. Alright, well, that's enough of the forest village. I don't really know what I can do there just yet. You're fighting Wolfman. <laughs> I love him. Oh my god, he looks so incredible. Deep within the spooky forest, you're attacked by the Wolfman. Perhaps you can defeat him by kicking him in the arts. That's right, Wolfman's got arts. I didn't even have to ask. He just followed up with the explanation. Yeah, what of it? Of course he's got arts. He's a man. He's a wolf man. Oh god, that's funny. I'm just, I just got some meat from it, though. Oh, <laughs> that's too much, the wolf man. I just thought he looked funny, but... Oh, the spooky vampire, he's just kind of adorable. Not quite as funny, very similarly funny, but... I kind of hope it talks about the vampire nards while we're at it. This is a spooky vampire. He wants you to... He wants to sack your blood. He is a terrifying apparition, even though he talks like a cross between Arnold Schwarzenegger and Count Chocula. So it'd be more like, because what, what's Count Chocula? He's like, one, ah, 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 do, ah, 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 ah. And then we got, then we have big muscular Arnold. You know, I used to be the Terminator. Get to the chopper! It's not a tumor! So what's, what's the combination of those things? Suck your blood! I don't know, I can't... I, <laughs> no, it's a funny visual though, it's uh, I ruined it by actually trying to put a voice to it. Attack him, and ooh, gained a muscle point. Again, the spooky forest, you're fighting a bar? It's, it's not quite a bear, and it's literally just a head. You were attacked by a bar. Yep, I reckon there's a lot of bar in these here woods. Boy, howdy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got the jump on me. He actually laid a, laid a hit. Shit. I, oh, man, I'm mean, taking damage there. I gotta be careful about this. Uh, do I use an item? Maybe I use my shurikens. Yeah, I'm for sure using that. That sounds awesome. You conjure up three ravioli and hurl them at your opponent. The first shuriken pops on impact, showering it with nearly frozen soda and dealing five damage. The hell another shuriken strikes its leg covering it with hair oil and dealing five more damage critical hit the third shuriken bursts over its head showering it with blue plain blue paint what is what is inside of these freaking raviolis what is any of that nearly frozen soul soda hair oil and blue paint that's the weirdest thing got myself a bar skin Nope, that's the wrong, that's not a... Boy, how do you got myself a bar skin? This is the pelt from a big old bar. Yup, I reckon it is. Big old bar. <laughs> oh no, crap, another bar. It gets a jump on you, the bar starts to attack, but suddenly needs to go do that thing that bars do in the woods. <laughs> Does a bar shit in the woods? Attack him with a spatula? Oh, oh he's, he's gonna possibly kill me. I'm using the shurikens once more, and I, boiling water, chilled vodka, and mud wrestling mud. <laughs> Who knew that was a very specific kind of mud? I need to go do something to heal myself here. I don't want to die. Who would who would help me? Someone on the right side of the tracks, maybe? Food increases my like adventure count, but does it also just like heal me? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat one tomato to see what, exactly what it does. You gain one tomato, that's it. You eat the tomato, then promptly wish you had thrown it at a bad comedian instead. Oh, right, I need to, I need to go back to my, my camp, then I can rest. And you gain 18 HP and mana and everything. And it, it costs... It just costs one adventure. Oh, okay, that's, yeah, it's, it's not a big deal to go back and rest. Then I'll come back and, and do some more fighting here. This time's not a wolf man, it's a warwolf. You're attacked by a warwolf. A werewolf. A warwolf. You can't pronounce it, but you can certainly lay the smack down upon it. You have a big old smack. Oh, I fumbled. <laughs> so I give him a big old nothing, I guess. Oh, crap. You drop your spatula on your nipple and it does three points of damage. Oh, crap. All right, use my skill instead. Jeez, you gain one cheek. That went terribly for me. I immediately just need to go rest again. 
And now we can go back and hopefully fight some more things and not drop spatulas on our nipples. You're fighting a triffid. In the midst and mists of the spooky forest, you encounter a triffid, a horrifyingly ambulatory plant. You probably need an ambulance after it's done ambulating all over you. And, oh, I, I don't quite kill it. It reaches out with one of its tendrils and gives you a vicious Indian burn on your lower back. I don't know how much health any of these things have, so I keep using the skills because it does way more damage. I got Moxie Weed. This is a small weed which, when eaten, makes you more moxious. Kids, don't try this at home. And the Spooky Stick. It's not quite a staff, I don't think. This is a stick from the tree, from a tree in the spooky forest. It's pretty heavy. You could probably whack some stuff with it pretty effectively. Meat pasting component, two-handed staff. Oh, I think it does qualify as a staff. Well, I want to go take that to the staff dude, Rodrick. Is that his name? Rodrick, the staff crafter. Aww, he can't do anything with that. I guess it doesn't quite qualify for one reason or another. Where were some of the other things that I was told that I could go to? Maybe, oh, it was in the nearby plains, the Cobb's Knob. Maybe I'll have a better better uh, luck over here, because I, I think this distant forest may have stepped one or two levels above, above my skill right now. I have to continually run back and heal, which I forgot to do right now. But that's fine, because right now I got Malice and Chains. And nice Alice and Chains reference there. I I don't have a battle, which is good. On a dirt road outside the Cobb's Knob, you trip over a rock and knock yourself briefly unconscious on a different, larger, and sharper rock. When you come to and find yourself in a chain gang being forced to haul sewage in and out of the knob, you're not quite sure why they're taking sewage into the knob, but yours is not exactly to reason why given the circumstances. One way or another, this servitude must come to an end, but how? Serve your sentence, rise and revolt, plot a cunning escape. You fight a sleeping knob goblin guard, or fighting. You lay low until you notice that the knob goblin guarding ha you has dozed off. Then you slip out of your chains, which weren't very tight, and charge him. Unsurprisingly, you take him by surprise. Uh, shurikens, of course, using the shurikens. You conjure up the raviolis, shower him with blood, chilled vodka, and spoiled milk. Ew. Oh, the different colors are different types of damage, and that's why this matters. Is because sometimes it's cold damage and, and like stench damage and things, things like that. I just figured that out. Ooh, a viking helmet. That's cool. That's literally what he's wearing. You've been viking again, haven't you? I can tell by your helmet. <laughs> I think that's better than the one I had before. The the ravioli hat that I had. Adventure again? That's it? I, I escaped? That's pretty good. I, I want to go to the main map, though, so I can quickly rest. And then I want to decide if I want to put that hat on. I think I might. I think I might want to put the hat on. Power 10, add spell damage. Hmm. I'll take the extra power, which I don't ex I don't exactly know what power means, <laughs> but I want to be more powerful. And yeah, I think that's the right decision. Is there any reason why I would want to use this over this? This has extra spell damage. And this has extra spooky damage. Uh, I've been using a lot of spells, so it, it, it is quite nice to have that right now, actually. Why am I not full health? Oh, because I, I, I just gained muscle. That, so that's what happened there. Let's rest up again so we can actually be at our full potential. Go back to Cobb's cave. The Knob Goblin. Oh, a, a Knob Goblin assistant chef. He's currently in training to be a chef. He proudly wields his set of neophyte tongs and whistles a happy cooking song as he prepares to beat you senseless. I'm gonna try the spatula. Ah, cool. Nine damage with the spatula? Damn. New attack damage record. Good for me. You're fighting a knob goblin barbecue team, a whole team of them. This is a deadly combination of a neophyte knob goblin chef and a magically animated barbecue grill. Okay, so it's just the one goblin, but the grill is the grill is on his side. Sometimes these things are friendly, but this one appears to be pretty aggressive. I bet I can take it. Oh crap, you deal a paltry one damage. Your opponent might be a little out of your league. Its grill gets all up in your grill, but you tell it best to get stepping. And I'm, I'm using my skill on it. Took it, down, took it down with room temperature coffee, unholy water, and orange nail polish. We got the knob goblin tongs. Mm, that's a 
decent damage. I, I think my other one's three to six, so what I have right now, I think it's actually better. This is a set of tongs used by the knob goblins during barbecues. They also sometimes use them to move salad around. Tongs are pretty heavy, though. Let's let's do a couple more adventures. Another one. Oh, okay. No goblin barbecue. This one isn't fighting me. This guy's just he's just grilling. As you near Cobb's Knob, you smell something familiar. Following your nose, you reach a clearing in which several knob goblins appear to be having a barbecue. You hide in some nearby shrubbery, plotting your next move. There's no word of an apron, and he doesn't appear to actually be wearing an apron. But I think there's no harm in kissing the chef. You pucker up and approach the knob goblin chef, but he sees you coming, produces a bottle of magical lighter fluid, and squirts it onto the grill. Uh, is this... I, I could use that to, magical lighter fluid? I could use that to light that cake that I've been hanging on to. Blue flames billow from the grill, scorching you. Luckily, they also scorch the novelty candles on Claude's birthday cake, which continue burning after the blue flames dissipate. What a ridiculous coincidence how... That's just, I <laughs> never would have expected that result, but that worked out damn well. This is a birthday cake for Cloud. The guy who baked it, what was that guy's name anyway, will be excited that you figured out a way to light the candles. You should take it back to him right away. He was near the haunted pantry, as you recall, so make sure your wheels keep on spinning round <laughs> until you get there. Yeah, sure. I, I, I think I'm going to go heal up first, just in case. For whatever reason, I, I have to go through a couple battles first, or f he decides that he wants to fight me. I, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to understand how <laughs> this guy works. L he was in the haunted pantry, right? Happy birthday, Cloud. As you draw near the pantry, the anonymous baker approaches you. Capital, he says, taking the cake from you. Cloud, we'll be ever so pleased. Please take this as a small measure of my thanks. The pat of cake pendant. This is a mystical artifact typically worn by a baker man. It'll make it slightly easier for you to bake cakes and cook up other sorts of magic. But it's pretty old, so its enchantment is a little, little worn out. Maybe with this thing you'll be able to show up those jerks, the butcher and the candlestick maker. <laughs> all thinking they own the tub and that they make all the rules. Harumph! Extra mysticality and regenerate zero to one MP per adventure. That's really sick, actually. Uh, I because I'm I'm starting to use more and more magic and everything, so I'm I'm for sure putting that on. I don't know if it automatically equipped or anything like that. Accessories, throw that on your neck. Cool. I'm very happy with that result. I'm feeling generally good about things. Uh, I don't know if I'm quite ready for the the uh, the distant woods just yet. Is this tiny little thing here a seaside shack? Do I check that out quickly? You knock on the door of the seaside shack, but there's no answer. Maybe try again later. Okay. The lair of the naughty sorceress. How did I not even see that before? What the, <laughs> what the hell is this? It's massive. Uh, it also looks like I can't do anything here. That's just kind of neat. The naughty sorceress's tower. Something I guess I can look forward to further down the line. I think that's where I'm going to leave things off for now. I'm very happy with uh, taking care of that cake and getting the, the pendant and everything like that. So that's awesome. I feel like that was a, a good little chunk of progress that we had in this episode. Damn, this game is shaping up to be as funny as I hoped it would be. It feels so good to be getting back into the Loathing world after the little bit of a void that was left with uh, the end of West of Loathing. I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.